In the previous movie in this weekly series, we rigged a spark gap transformer, or Jacob's Ladder, using linked X-Form. This week, we will animate the movement of the helper object along a spline curve using a path constraint. We will customize the velocity of the movement, also customize the extents of the movement along the path, and cause it to cycle. Next week, we will expand on this, varying the cycles using waveform controllers. Select Spark Helper 001 and go to the Motion panel and open up Assign Controller. And we're going to assign a path constraint directly to the position controller here rather than doing it through the menus. And I prefer to do it this way because I avoid an unnecessary list controller. So I can just streamline the controller structure a little bit by doing it this way. Select the position controller and then click the assign controller button. In the assign position controller dialog, we want to choose path constraint and click OK. Doing it this way does not automatically assign the path, so we need to do that manually. In the path parameters, click the add path button and then click on electrode 001, which is a renderable spline object. And the helper object jumps to the start, or 0% along the path. And if we scrub in the timeline, we can see that over the course of 600 frames, it moves from 0% to 100% along the path. The Add Path button stays on, so that's a bit of an issue. You'll need to remember to turn that off by clicking it, or by right-clicking somewhere in the viewport. Also in the path parameters near the bottom, there's an option for looping. What that does is if the percentage along path ever exceeds 100%, then it will simply loop back to 0% along the path. We don't want that, and we're going to manage looping in the curve editor, so turn loop off. Now we are ready to go into the curve editor. I recommend exiting the motion panel, maybe go to the create panel, and deselect the object, reselect the object, and then open up the Curve Editor from the main toolbar. I'll resize that window, and I want to frame the percent curve here. And normally we would click on Frame Horizontal and Value Extents, but that doesn't always work. Make sure that you're not actually selecting the Spark Helper track at the top here. So if you need to click on some other track and then click on Percent, just make sure that the percent track is the only one that has solid highlighting. Otherwise, you may have issues accessing some of the menus. So we can try to frame horizontal and value extents, but that doesn't always work. So we need to use the keyboard shortcut in this case, middle mouse to position the curve, control alt and middle mouse to scale vertically and or horizontally. Just frame that curve up. Now, by default, the percent curve is a linear float controller. And we want some Bezier tangent handles on this in order to customize the movement. So right click on the percent track and choose Assign Controller. From the Assign Float Controller dialog, choose Bezier Float. Click OK. We need to make some basic adjustments here. If we look in the viewport, we can see that. On frame one, the box or helper object is too low on the electrode. We want it to be somewhere up around here. And that's going to be controlled by the percent along path keyframe here. So just select that key. And I've got the values displayed. Let's set the frame number to one. And the value or percentage along path, 30%. And now that is at its correct position on frame one. Let's speed up the animation overall. Back in the Curve Editor, we want to access the keyframe at the end here. Click on that. And at frame 600, it is 100% along the path. Let's speed that up by sending it to frame 40. And then reframe our curve. It's going to be approximately a 40 frame cycle. And we want to adjust these tangent handles a little bit to customize this. On this final keyframe, we want that to be a fast in. 
And on the first keyframe, we want it to be a little bit of a slow out. Let's make it cycle. Go into the edit menu and choose controller, out of range types. And in the param curve, out of range types dialog, choose cycle and click OK. And now we can see we're getting a loop here. All right, cool. We can play the timeline, see what that looks like. So it's playing the same exact loop every time. I'll rewind back to frame one. That's how to customize and cycle a path constraint animation. And next week, we will expand on this by modulating both the time and the value of this animation so that each cycle is different. And we will use a waveform controller to do that. Join me again next week when we will build further on this exercise.